Hopefully everybody can find a place to sit down this morning. We're going to be spending a couple of days together, and it's nice to see all of you here. I'm sure many of you have come from uh, close by and far away. How many from uh, San Diego? Stand up, San Diego, San Diego, wherever you are. Let's see San Diego. Hey, San Diego. Fantastic. Nice to see you. Do we have anybody here, anybody here from uh, Northern California? Up north? Okay. We do the leadership seminar up north, but sometimes uh, they come from up there, down here. Let's see, who's next? <laughs> Santa Barbara, right. Ventura, Oxnard, Santa Barbara. Where are you? Stand up. Right down here. Nice to have you. Okay, who's next? Phoenix. Phoenix. <laughs> Two for... <laughs> All right. How about uh, Los Angeles? Good old Los Angeles. Tony, are you good? Okay, what's next? Orange County. Hey. Anybody else from some exotic place? Artesia. <laughs> Okay. It's a pleasure to have everybody here, and uh, we want to welcome you to uh, the leadership seminar. We're going to have a good time uh, these two days. By the way, we're going to take frequent breaks for uh, some of you that have to smoke, whatever. We'll uh, give you a chance to smoke, and then we'll have a chance for us also to uh, stretch a little bit, relax a little bit. We'll take frequent breaks uh, throughout the day. We're going to have lunch probably about 1 o'clock something like that, so we can uh, put ourselves back together here and sustain ourselves through the day. Then uh, tomorrow we're also starting our class at uh, 8 o'clock, okay, 8 o'clock Sunday morning, and we'll go till about uh, 5 o'clock today, we'll also go till about 5 o'clock tomorrow. Does everybody have note paper? Did you get your journal after the seminar? You didn't get you a journal? Hmm. Okay, we're going to talk about journals today and all of the other good things under time management. Let me give you a list of the subjects we're going to cover. First of all, we're going to cover communication. That'll be our first subject today. But I want to welcome everybody here for the two-day leadership seminar. It's nice to have you. Most of you have probably been to the evening seminar, so you're already well acquainted, fairly well acquainted, I should say, with my story and where I came from and how all of this got started. About 16, 17 years ago, I gave my first public seminar. And fortunately, all of you are not in on my first seminar. That first one was not that good. But uh, over the last 16, 17 years, I've been uh, doing my best to try to practice and see if I can't get better at sharing my ideas and expressing my feelings about uh, the things at least that helped me to turn my life around. Now, about four or five years ago, we had some businesses, corporations in uh, California here that invited us to come in and talk about some of the things we've learned in doing business around the world in various countries, uh, human behavior and setting goals and game plans and communication. And uh, we decided to do it. And then after that one got started, we did another one and it started growing and we finally decided to make it a product of our, our company. And so for the last uh, four years, we've been doing this two-day leadership seminar. And I enjoy it. It's a chance to, uh, to get acquainted. It's a chance to uh, uh, meet people on a little more personal basis. When there's a thousand people in the evening seminar, it's hard to get acquainted. Uh, most everybody by 11 o'clock is ready to head for home. They got the babysitters and everything, and so it's hard to get acquainted. But at least these two days, we'll have a chance to chat. Make sure I get a chance to meet you before the two-day session is over and um, talk a little more personally. A couple of things I hope that you'll find here in these two days. One is sincerity. We really sincerely want to give you a great deal of information that might be helpful for you. 
And sometimes it's a little difficult to judge sincerity at first glance. Especially in a big seminar, somebody walks on stage, conducts a seminar and leaves, and you don't have that close an inspection as to sincerity. But at least these two days, uh, you'll have a chance to uh, sort of look us over a little more closely. And I hope that's one thing you find here, sincerity. I'd like for these two days to be a start of some new answers for you. Um, two things we all need in order to do well. Here they are. Number one, ideas. And ideas are not really that difficult to come by. A new idea is just as close as the next book you open. It's just as close as striding into the library, the bookstore, or attending the next class, or meeting the next person that might have some experience beyond yours, and out of conversation come some good ideas. So ideas are not that difficult to come by, but we do need ideas to change our lives. Mr. Shof taught me that there wasn't any problem I couldn't solve without a good idea. I used to think money was one of my problems. And uh, he said, no, money's not a problem. Now, up until then, I always thought it was. He said, the only problem is the lack of an idea on how to create money, how to create wealth, how to give service, how to earn money. So it's not the lack of money that's the problem, it's the lack of an idea. So ideas can change your life. And hopefully by the time we finish these two days, we'll have a long list of ideas for you to take home and at least ponder and edit them and see what you can get from them. Use some of them. Try them out. But here's what else you need for success. It's called inspiration. And that's the tricky part, inspiration. The people who seem to say, who seem to stay totally turned on, all excited about life, they have no problem getting up and generating that zest for the day, emotional vitality. They're excited about living, excited about working, they're excited about accomplishing. That's, uh, that's unique. And I guess that's what all of us wish for, that kind of inspiration. But that's, that's a good question. Why are some people incredibly turned on about life and other people find it hard to get going? I don't know. Part of that's a mystery to me. But we do need inspiration, something that drives us. Of course, I guess the basic inspiration. One of my wealthy friends, we asked him one time what drove him to become wealthy, and he said, malnutrition. <laughs> so I guess that's what you start with, right? Just absolute bare bones necessity will inspire you somewhat to uh, get out there and get the job done. But then if you could find something that would really turn you on, something that really got you going, um, that's what life is really all about. If you can find something that gives you that incredible high energy zest for living. If I was to wish something for you specially, I think that's what I would wish for you. Because if you have that high emotional energy, uh, finding the answers are not all that difficult. And who knows but what this weekend might be the beginning of some new zest and energy on your part to go for your dreams. Here's what else I hope we can create this weekend, some emotional turbulence. It's a good idea every once in a while to just stir our mental pot. Just get the ideas flowing, get the thinking flowing, get to looking and asking questions and doing some wondering. And uh, perhaps that'll happen this weekend. Then primarily, this seminar was designed for this purpose, and I've got a phrase for you to make a part of your notes. We all need guidelines for translating response into results. Guidelines for translating response into results. It's one thing to get excited and to respond and say, I want to do well, I'm going to change my life. Now the big question is, how do you do it? And hopefully, these two days will generate some 
thinking on your part on how you can make plans for translating excitement into results. Probably these two days, one good question to ask is, why are you here? <clears throat> it might just be a question you'll ponder just for yourself. We're not going to ask you to disclose that to everybody that's here this weekend. But that's a good question to ask yourself. Why are you here? And uh, probably there's a whole variety of reasons why everybody picked these two days to come and sit in on some lessons and classes on uh, doing better. Maybe some of you just came here these two days to get away, and that's not a bad, not a bad thing. We used to do this seminar up at the ranch at Clear Lake. We've got 1,600 acres up there in a beautiful lodge, and, but we can only take care of about 50, 55 people, so we, we had to move out of the ranch. But um, it was a good place to get away. We had the horses and the swimming pools and the tennis courts and jacuzzis and a pool table and ping pong and all kinds of stuff motorcycles to ride, and jeeps to hit the jeep trails. And it was kind of a fun weekend to get away. And I think a lot of people just spent their money and came to the weekend <laughs> seminar just to get away, right? Just to leave everything for a couple of days. And uh, maybe you're just getting away this weekend, I don't know. But uh, if you are, that's okay. Uh, for some of you, um, Maybe we've caught you at springtime and you've got something new going and uh, just a little more fine tuning and you'll have it flying. Uh, you'll be off and running and your new fortune or your second fortune uh, or whatever might already be in view and uh, all you need is just a bit more inspiration and a few more ideas and away you go. So you've come here full of high anticipation and hope that uh, maybe just one or two more turns and you'll have it going your way. Uh, maybe some of you have come here uh, and it's been sort of drifting along. Maybe it's summertime and you're a little weary with the task of uh, keeping out the bugs and the weeds and whatever else might be attacking your program. Uh, that could be. Maybe some of you we've caught you at wintertime. Uh, maybe some of you are in transition. I've been through a few of those where I'm letting go of one and looking for the next one and uh, wondering just exactly what I'm going to do. But wherever we have caught you at this particular time of your life, whether it's winter time for you or spring time or uh, maybe it's harvest time, maybe you're raking it in and things are going well and, and uh, over the last few years you put it together and now you're cashing it in. And maybe this weekend is a celebration for you, I don't know. But whether it's a celebration or whether it's a beginning or whether it's transition or, or whether it's a serious weekend, for some of you this may be a darn important weekend. And I certainly want to treat it that way. Uh, some of you may just very well have to have some, some unique answers. And, and uh, you're pondering some things that are very important. You're at one of those major forks in the road. And whatever direction you decide to take this weekend may be one of the most important decisions you make. I understand some of those weekends. And if it's that kind of weekend for you, I want to treat it very seriously and make sure that uh, sincerely we cover everything we can to uh, give you the best answers at least that we're going to have to come up with this weekend so you'll be off to a, a better start come Monday. Anyway, wherever we have found you, we want to do you good these two days. Here's how to get the most out of the two-day seminar, and then we'll get into our first subject, communication. First of all, I think we ought to realize where we already are. It seems like better things come to us when, first of all, we're thankful for what we have. And I would say, for the most part, you know, we're all doing fairly well, at least compared to the rest of the world. One of the weekend seminars up at the ranch, just before it started, I walked out into this parking area where we have a place up there to park all the automobiles. There were Ferraris and uh, Continentals and Eldorados and Corvettes. I think there was one Rolls. I couldn't believe the parking lot with all these fancy cars. And I walked in to uh, conduct the seminar. I think there was only about 35, 40 people. 
to spend the weekend. My opening remarks were, you know, ladies and gentlemen, the rest of the world would find it rather strange that we have come up here to spend two days to figure out how to do better. <laughs> wow. And uh, could very well probably be said today, right, if we were to take a survey out in the parking area and we walk in here and, you know, have breakfast in style and we're all dressed pretty good and looking pretty good. The rest of the world, the four and a half other billion people in the world that are probably struggling a lot harder than we are would find it strange that we're trying to figure out how to do better. But we do have the chance to do well. We have the chance not only to do well for ourselves, but we have the chance to be an influence and to develop leadership for uh, the people we come in contact with. So we do have a chance to do better. And I think when you have the chance, you ought to take it. So, first of all, realize where we are. Second, be thankful for what we already have. Who was it said, I complained about not having any shoes until I met someone who had no feet? So, we should be thankful for what we already have. Then I think to get the best out of the two days is be eager to learn. No matter how much you already know, how wealthy you are, and we're not here to compare bank accounts. Really, no matter how much wealth of information you've already gotten, how successful you are, there's always a chance you could probably learn something else or appreciate someone else's point of view. Sure enough, somebody says, did you ever look at it from over here? And you step over there and take a look at it. And sure enough, they've got a unique view of something that maybe you haven't considered it from that viewpoint before. And that's always interesting. So be eager to learn. Then I would ask you to gather up all that we're going to share with you these two days and argue with it later. Not that I don't mind a good debate. I like, I like a good debate. Our problem is this weekend, we just don't have time to just open this up and let everybody have a chance to talk and, and uh, exchange ideas like we might do in an open workshop. Um, Although I do like that forum. Uh, well, one of the ways to f come up with good ideas is debate. It's one of the ways we've decided, uh, the founding fathers decided it was a good way to run the country, is have two-party system and uh, let the representatives from both parties go to Congress and debate. Not bad. Somebody says, I've got a great idea that'll cure the problems of the nation. Everybody else says, wonderful, put it on the table, let's take a look at it. Right? And they start asking questions. And after a few questions, the person may very well say, I withdraw my idea, right? I, <laughs> I just hadn't thought of those questions before, right? So uh, that's good, debate. I like debate. In fact, I like it so well, I'm willing to take either side of the question. It doesn't really matter. But um, we're just going to have to go very rapidly because we've got an awful lot to share in just two days. We want to send you home with a whole wagon load of stuff to ponder and to edit and to go through. And then when the two days are finished, you know, as some of you talk among yourselves, because some of you've come here representing families or a, an office or a company or whatever, and uh, you're going to have a chance to talk with each other about the ideas we're going to share here these two days. Um, then you go through it and edit it and decide what you think about it. and. If it makes sense, use it, try it, refine it, edit it, go through it, you know. I don't mind that at all. Uh, you don't have to buy everything any one person says. Just take in the information, digest it thoroughly, think about it sincerely, go through it meticulously, and then do whatever you wish to with it. You know, be independent. As we said in the evening seminar, don't be a follower. Be a student. Okay, then these two days, one more point. Try your best to be a good listener. And sometimes it's not that easy to listen. There's all kinds of voices, right, trying to get our attention. One of the good things about going up to the ranch for this seminar was at least you had the sense of getting away from your business and getting away from the traffic. In fact, it was really away. Most everybody got lost trying to find it, so it was a way, right? And nobody's going to drop in, and uh, so it's off up in the mountains, gone. 
And uh, sometimes in a hotel setting, it's just not that easy to dismiss all the voices that are going on in your mind about family and business and what's happening and what's going to happen and what about Monday and all of that. But do your best to uh, zero in and uh, just set aside the, uh, the burdens of the day and whatever's happening in your life, if you possibly can, and really zero in, become a good listener these two days. And we'll move right along and see if we can't uh, load up your notebooks with plenty to ponder by the time we finish. Okay, let's now get into our first subject called communication. If there's one skill to develop, as well as any other, this is probably one of the major ones, communication. And by the way, I've got a theme for this seminar for these two days. The evening seminar, the theme was the major key to your better future is you. I've changed it just a little to read. The magic key to your better future is you. There's magic in a smile. There's magic in a handshake. There's magic in human contact. There's magic in believing. In fact, that's a good book if you haven't got it. Add it to your library. The Magic of Believing by Bristol. Good book. Anyway, hopefully these two days we'll talk a little bit more and maybe discover some more of the magic of human contact, human ability, human potential. And communication is one of those Major, major skills to develop. See if you can't find the magic within you that can reach other people. How to affect other people with words. Major challenge. To get your ideas across, to get people to understand what you're trying to say. Get them to understand how you feel. And at first, words are a bit clumsy when it comes to trying to express an emotion or an idea or a feeling. But if you'll practice it, and especially if you know the components of good communication, it'll really start to help. I heard the story about the preacher in the back country down in the southern part of the United States was taking over this little country church for the first time, and he was up preaching his first sermon. And he said, congregation, first of all, this church has got to crawl. And in order for this church to crawl, everybody's got to show up and do their Christian duty. And if everybody will show up and do their Christian duty, this church can begin to crawl. And the congregation understood what the preacher said, and they all responded, let it crawl, preacher, let it crawl. He said, next, this church has got to get up and walk. In order for this church to walk, Everybody has got to tell their Christian story and try to win somebody else. And if everybody will tell their story, try to win someone else, this church can begin to walk. And the congregation understood what the preacher said, and they all responded, let it walk, preacher, let it walk. He said, next, this church has got to run. And in order for this church to run, everybody has got to divide up, serve on the committees, and do the work of the church. And if everybody will divide up, serve on the committees, do the work of the church, this church can begin to run. And they all understood what the preacher said, and they responded, let it run, preacher, let it run. He said, finally, this church has got to fly. And in order for this church to fly, everybody has got to reach down deep and give some of their cash. And if everybody will reach deep, and give a portion of their cash, this church can begin to fly. And they all understood what the preacher said, and they responded, let it walk, preacher, let it walk. <laughs> okay, how to make it clear. First of all, we communicate for two primary reasons, and here they are. Number one, we communicate just to get along. You can't even function in the barest minimums without some kind of communication. If you want the bread, you have to learn to ask for it, the barest of communication. 
So that's number one. Here's number two. We communicate to accomplish some purpose. A specific purpose. Now, communication starts from somewhere. And for you, communication starts with you. Good phrase to remember. Your world begins with you. This is not to be self-centered, but your world is around you, your own consciousness and your own awareness. And so for things to work well, first of all, it's got to work well with you. Part of my training and getting me turned around headed in the right direction when I first met Mr. Schof, the man who helped to formulate the ideas that helped to change my business and social and personal life, was for me to understand that the biggest changes I was, th that was going to have to be made in my future were going to have to be made personal. I kept hoping the weather would change and the government would change and prices would change and my neighbors would change and the people would change and my friends would change and that the economy would change and that the country's direction would change. I kept waiting for change all around and then he's the one who taught me. What changes your world is not wishing for change. What changes your world is changing. You've got to change. And sure enough, as a man thinketh, a book by James Allen, there's a little phrase in there that says, humans are rather strange. We curse the effect and nourish the cause. We want it to change, but we don't want to change. Interesting. The guy puts sand in his shoes and he can hardly walk. And you say, well, how can you walk with that sand in your shoes? The guy says, I can hardly walk. <laughs> you say, well, why do you do that? He said, I don't know. I've just been doing it for years. Incredible. The guy puts tacks in his bed and he can hardly sleep. You say, well, how can you sleep with all those tacks in your bed? The guy says, I can hardly sleep. You say, well, why would you do that? He said, I don't know. It's been in the family for years. I mean, we just do things like that. Interesting why we would wish for it to change, <coughs> hoping it will change, but resisting change. Now, once you understand that all of it starts with you, now you can start making some incredible progress. And good communication with you, for you, that happens to you, the great majority of it starts with you. Now, here's a good phrase to remember. You cannot speak that which you do not know. First of all, you've got to have it before you can speak it, before you can share it. So good communication starts with an awareness that first of all, to get a good communication going with anybody, it's got to start with some substance on your part. Now, how to consciously grow and build the substance from where communication comes from, that is the key. It's like, first of all, making deposits. You can't withdraw anything till you put something in. We all need to be consciously aware every day of gathering up the ideas, the inspiration, the feelings that we're going to use for future communication. Future meaning maybe in the next five minutes, but maybe the next five days, five weeks, five months, five years. Consciously aware. It is not that difficult for the years to pass and to not be conscious of what's happening in the way of demands or what's going to come in the way of opportunity for you and just drift along and not be much further ahead a year from now than you are right now simply because you just let the days pass. But if you have a conscious awareness of what it takes to effectively affect other people, to get your ideas across, to get decisions, to express your feelings and your opinions, once you, once you do that deliberately and consciously and daily and consistently, now that's what starts your own personal development. Let me give you four key words to be aware of that will help you in uh, putting together a conscious awareness program of developing a source of communication, making these deposits. See, when you talk, you want a verbal check that'll cash. When you speak, you want to speak from something that's there, an awareness that's there, a feeling that's there. 
And to create this foundation or this reservoir or this deposit or this account from which you can talk, let me give you four words that will help you to do that. Here's the first one. Develop an interest. The first word is interest. Develop an interest in two primary things, life and people. If you're interested in life, see, right away, daily, weekly, monthly, you're going to be gathering up information and impressions and awareness, more so than someone who is not that interested. Most people want to make it, but they don't have that interest, that keen interest in what's going on around them. So the two things to be interested in is life and people. Make a study of those. Make sure you're entering something in your journal constantly about life and about people business life and social life, what's happening around you. It's called gathering so that you can use it for future conversations. Now you do this deliberately by using these four words and thinking about them. What I like to always do is develop a mental tick list, things to remember as you proceed through the day. Now at first when you develop a little mental tick list of things to remember, sometimes it's a little awkward. Right? It's like learning to play the piano. My teacher said, here's the right-hand scale. So I got those, no problem. Then my teacher says, now we're going to run the left-hand scales. I got those, no problem. Then I remember the day when she said, we're going to play both hands together. I thought, now that'll be tricky. <laughs> right? How could you do them both together? And I remember looking at one, looking at the other, but finally, right, I got to where I could play both hands together. Then I remember the day she said, now, we're going to read the music, play both hands. I thought, wow, how would you do that, right? And I'm looking at the music, looking at my hands, right? But finally I got that going. Then I remember the day she said, now, we're going to watch the audience, play the music, play both, uh, read the music, play both hands. I thought, now, how could you possibly do that? Right? But sure enough, I finally got to where I could watch the audience, read the music, and play both hands. Right? After a while. At first it was a little awkward, but after a while I finally got those, right, four things in line. So, here's what I want to give you. It's a little mental tick list to remember. And at first it may seem a little awkward to try to remember these four things in gathering information for future conversations, communication. But uh, just try, and then finally it'll come naturally. So the first word is interest. Be interested enough to find ideas to put in your journal. Be interested enough to look around. Keep your eyes open. What's going on? Be alert. Don't miss anything. Okay, here's the second word for good communication. Developing this reservoir. And that is fascination. Fascination goes a little bit beyond interest. Fascination means you take a second look. Fascination means you're just not interested in, in just surface information. You want to know what's behind it. What does it really mean? So if you really want to develop this reservoir of information for future conversations, you've got to be fascinated with life, fascinated with stories, fascinated with human behavior. Why do people act like they act? Why do they do what they do? Now also be interested and fascinated with your own life. How come I act like I act? Why do I always do this? How do I, why do I feel this way? See, that kind of fascination will start helping you to gather up the nation for good communication. Fascinated. Here's the third word, and this is a good one. Sensitivity. Develop a sensitivity to life and people. Let, let what's happening during the day touch you. Let it affect you. Develop a sensitivity to both tragedy and success, both the highs and the lows of life. A sensitivity to people's feelings, 
a sensitivity to the complexity of life as well as the simplicity of life. How people are different and yet so much the same. A sensitivity to people's beliefs, the way they look at things. Here's a good phrase, let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. Be sensitive. When Judy and I were married, I'll never forget, we got back from Europe. One time we were staying at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. It was about Christmas time, I don't know, the 20th of December, something like that. And uh, we decided to rent a car and drive out to Long Island. Judy had never been to Long Island. Judy was raised in the Midwest farm country too. And uh, on the way to, out to Long Island, uh, Judy had never been to Harlem. So um, we left the hotel and not very far away from the Waldorf Astoria is Harlem. I will never forget the look on Judy's face as we drove through Harlem. Incredible. It was the 20th of December, but in Harlem there was not one sign of Christmas. There was not one light, Christmas light, there was not one Christmas tree, there was not one wreath on any door, there was not one strand of tinsel, no sign of Christmas in Harlem on the 20th of December. And yet a few blocks away on Fifth Avenue and Park Avenue in New York and Rockefeller Center, there's the big blazing Christmas tree and the ice skaters are skating and uh, the chestnuts are roasting and, uh, <laughs> right, the, the shops are full of clothes and the shoppers are shopping and there's this feeling of wealth and affluence and a few blocks away is Harlem. Incredible. Judy talked about that experience for a long time after that, the impact it made on her, Harlem, and the incredible contrast in people's lives, from the wealthy to the poor, from the advantaged to the disadvantaged. It really affected her. But see, you want to be affected by life. Let it touch you, let it reach you. When I lived in Northern California, two or three times a year, I would go to San Francisco, the Tenderloin District, down at what's known as the bottom of the world. Just go spend a day and see what it's like on the other side of life. Walk the streets where the lonely walk and talk to them. Find out their stories. Go eat where they eat. Visit with them for a while. It's an incredible experience. Because I was raised fairly well, I've never had any tragedy in my life, so I really don't know what it's like, but it's good to have a view and a look. You don't have to go live in poverty, but you've got to be aware of it. You've got to know about it. You've got to be sensitive to it. Man, I got to know there, Frank. Frank runs a bar in the Tenderloin in San Francisco. What an incredible place. You wouldn't believe it. Frank sees more tragedy in a week than most people see in a lifetime. Incredible. I'm visiting with him there one day. He said, Jim, see that lady sitting over there on the, at the bar? I said, yes. He said, that's Cookie. He said, uh, how old do you think she is? I said, I don't know. She looks about 45. He said, she's 25. I said, wow. Uh, Cookie used to be a go-go dancer. And um, she developed some kind of <coughs> a bone disease and uh, had all these operations. And now she's got the bolts and the pins and so on trying to hold her together and she can hardly walk. And he said, Cookie comes in here three or four times a week and sits right there. And she's also got a little boy, five years old, he's dying of leukemia. And said, Cookie comes here and drinks till she can't drink anymore and usually I have to call a cab and have somebody come take her home. Cookie. The story really got to me. I used to go by after that every once in a while and put an envelope, put some money in an envelope and her name on it and leave it for her to come by and get. The story got me. But that's Frank, Cookie, the tenderloin, the other side of life, where the difficulties are. 
We've all got to be sensitive to that. We've got to let it affect us. As you let all of life affect you, so it affects your conversation. So it affects your communication. So people have this incredible sense that there's a great deal about you and your sensitivity and your interest and your fascination with life that, that makes life uniquely worthwhile for you. And I'll tell you what, it'll show up in your conversation. It'll show up in your feelings. It'll show up in your ability to reach people. Sensitivity. Don't be afraid of it. Use it. Develop it. Now here's the fourth word, knowledge. Develop a working knowledge. I've added one more word there. Working knowledge of life and people. A working knowledge means a systematic way of gathering up all the information that comes your way. And try to put it into some workable form. That's why we suggest a journal. You've just got to have a daily journal to record the ideas and the impressions and the feelings and the things that come your way so that you'll have this working knowledge, this depth of awareness. Now, if you'll work on those four words and be consciously aware that you're working on knowledge, sensitivity, fascination, and interest about life and people in a deliberate way, a daily way, a consistent way, so that when you get ready to talk, there'll be all this substance there waiting to back up whatever you have to say. Here's a good phrase, let what you say be the tip of the iceberg of all you know and all that you feel and all that you're aware of. Let what you say only be a small portion of all you know and feel. I'm sure we've all had experiences talking with some people and sure enough, they said far more than they knew. <laughs> Very quickly. All right. Now, let me give you four steps to good communication. Here are some of the components of communicating well that I think are important to keep in mind. First of all is have something good to say. And that's why we went into all these other words, developing this reservoir, this account. What that is to, to deliberately be gathering daily, consciously, Better things to say. Have something good to say. Good communication takes conscious preparation. When you hear a story, you just say, oh, that'll, I'm sure I can use that in years to come. That's a great story. I've got to remember that. I've got to keep that. I've got to store it. I've got to put it somewhere. Right? You just, you're alert all day long in gathering up things to have something good to say. It is said that for every hour of public presentation, you need many days of conscious preparation. And the same is true of personal conversation. What you want to make sure is that from now on, you don't treat ca conversations casually. Because casualness brings casualties, not only on the freeway, but in conversation. Just make sure your conversations aren't casual. Now, they don't, they don't all have to be deadly serious, but almost every conversation is important. Communicating with other people is important. Exchanging ideas is important. Getting our feelings across is important. And if you treat it casually, sure enough, you just won't be much better at it a year from now, two years from now than you are today. You've got to treat it important. And part of the importance of treating a conversation, communication seriously is to have something good to say. Here's another good word, research. Make your whole life process a, a research in this development of the reservoir for good communication. Now, if you've got a speech to make or, you know, you're going to have a family council or you're going to 
get together with somebody and you've got something important you're going to have to get across. Now, let me give you a good advice. Get ready for it. And sometimes getting ready is a matter of several days of taking some time throughout the day to get ready to get ready. However, if you're going to talk with somebody, you just, we all need to develop a sort of a quick mindset of getting ready to talk to somebody, you know, putting it in gear, being conscious, being aware, that's called getting ready. But this whole process of getting ready to have something good to say is very important, research. This is where your library comes in. We'll talk a little bit more about that under personal development. Library, your journals, taking notes, capturing feelings and ideas. That's how you have something good to say. You do it deliberately, consciously. <laughs>